Peace, power, and love. It's your one and only, Kansu Sheshmo Amun. And this is another Team Osiris production. What's happening, y'all? What's going on? Everybody out there, I hope you are blessed, definitely not stressed. And today we're going to talk about a phenomenon, um, hurricanes. Recently we've been hit with a barrage of hurricanes, man, from Hurricane Harvey down in Texas, Hurricane um, Irma, in that's headed down through Florida as we speak, Hurricane um, Jose, if I'm not mistaken, that is in Mexico, and Hurricane Kita or Kima, let me get that right, let me check, um, no, it's uh, Katia, wow. Um, joining us today, though, is a member of Team Osiris, the Grand Archivist. He's joining us by call in. What's going on, Mel? How you feel, man? Melvin Jefferson, a.k.a. the Grand Archivist. Team Osiris is on the horizon. What's going on, bro? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Team Osiris is definitely on the horizon. You know, peace to all the viewership, peace to you know, the whole team, peace to you, bro, Kyle uh, yeah, you know, we've been definitely been hit with a couple of hurricanes. It is hurricane season for that reason. So, you know, we definitely just want everybody to be careful. You know, regardless, you know, what happens, just you know, take care of yourself first. You know, we have one life. And, you know, the theme of today always, I've been starting a new trend. If you look below me, it's all about propaganda. The ability to convince the victim to vote for the victimizer. Um, this is a good topic because along with um, this unfortunate news of natural disasters comes a lot of conspiracy theory. We talk about HARP. <laughs> we talk about, um, you know, governmental uh, inclusion and a plot to maintain or uh, yeah, I'll say maintain the population through natural disasters. Um, global warming, these kind of things uh, we're going to discuss today. Uh, but first, you know, we're going to kind of try to deal with um, uh, the general news that's going on today. And then we're going to dis disambiguate some things, kind of break down and tell you what a hurricane is, what actually causes it. Um, and things of that nature, the different levels or categories of um, these uh, phenomena, this phenomena called hurricane. Um, but first things first, I'm going to go to a, um, a live scene and give you the satellite view of the hurricanes. And then we're going to go into a short clip uh, about recent events. So if you uh, see my screen. Let's listen really quick. This is uh, published by USA Today. Irma continues to be an extremely dangerous Category 5 hurricane. Right now it's centered about 650 miles to the east-southeast of South Florida. The eye of Irma is right now moving through the Turks and Caicos Islands. Maximum sustained winds are potentially catastrophic, 175 miles per hour. Right now Irma is moving off toward the west-northwest at about 16 miles per hour. And over the next several days, we expect Irma to remain uh, near a Category 4, Category 5 hurricane as it moves west-northwestward to the south of the Bahamas and north of Cuba and turns northward and approaches the Florida Peninsula on Sunday. The new track forecast is a little to the left of our previous one and now takes the storm inland over the Florida Peninsula, uh, making landfall as a, a major, uh, major hurricane somewhere in the vicinity of South Florida on Sunday. There's still some uncertainty as to where this northward turn will occur, but everyone in South Florida should be preparing for the landfall of a potentially catastrophic major hurricane in the area on Sunday with a category of four to five winds and a potentially life-threatening storm surge. We have a hurricane watch in effect for the east coast of Florida, south of Jupiter Inlet, the west coast of Florida, south of Bonita Beach, all of the Florida Keys and Lake Okeechobee. 
We have a storm surge watch in effect south of Jupiter Inlet and Bonita Beach, everywhere in this pink area, including the Florida Keys. Anywhere in this pink area is at risk of life-threatening storm surge in the next 48 hours. We can see storm surge flooding uh, is for, uh, uh, exceeding 5 to 10 feet above ground level in these areas. So if you've been asked to evacuate from an evacuation zone, please follow that advice. We're expecting tropical storm force winds to arrive first in South Florida in the Keys uh, during the day on Saturday, progressing northward through Central Florida by Sunday morning uh, into North Florida by late Sunday and potentially up into Georgia and South Carolina by uh, Sunday night into Monday. Uh, we could see widespread hurricane impacts through much of the Florida Peninsula with Irma as it moves northward through the weekend. Right. Wow, man. So they, they, they're tracking it to hit Florida. That's two that's hitting Florida. Man. That, that is uh, definitely um, a serious issue. That, And, you know, um, I hope that everyone is safe out there. Um, and uh, everybody really uh, takes cover, man, and really pay attention to the... Um, to the situation at hand. Forgive me, my phone is ringing like crazy now that I go live. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it, it's definitely detrimental. Uh, everybody out there should really be careful. And we wanted to talk about, um, at the time, uh, Hurricane uh, Harvey and Hurricane Irma, not knowing that two more uh, would be arising. Uh, Brother Melvin, I, I want to ask you a question, man. What is your opinion on this phenomenon, man? Is it is it by happenstance or, you know, is, is this something that is orchestrated, in your opinion? Uh, yes, actually, um, I'm not sure if this is a normal thing. Um, but anybody who's experienced uh, hurricane season, especially those of us in the Atlantic, uh, you know, you know this is a normal thing uh, for us to have these hurricanes. Uh, it's just that usually the, the closer they come and land, you kind of hope that they kind of slow down a bit until they, you know, go around or go out back into the ocean. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So this is just a normal phenomenon. This is this is not something super spooky or something to have a, a conspiracy, you know, idea about. It's just a normal process of nature. You know, it's just what what nature does. Uh, you know, what the oceans do out there. So it's just a normal thing. You know. Yeah, I actually agree, uh, bro. Yeah, it's, it's just you know we have storms here even on land, uh, so it's not like there's something actually, you know, responsible for it. Sure, there are a combination of things that can produce storms, but even within that, it's just a natural phenomenon. It's, you know, you know, things, energy, energy being created in this thing somewhere will always allow energy to be created elsewhere. So it's just, it's a natural byproduct of a storm. So that's really it. Mm. You know, extra wind, extra, you know, if it picks up wind speed, if um, it has water or surrounding it, then it's going to, of course, become bigger than what you would normally expect. But... Again, that's just a byproduct of the natural phenomenon. Mm. Well, those of you who are um, who are listening, do your own independent research because you know we've had um, stories about a heart machine and things of that. We'll touch on it lightly, but we'll probably do a follow up to this and really get in depth with that because that's going to really require some discussion, some disambiguating. But um, what I will do is give a general information, you know, um, um, and the general information, let's, let's, I'm pulling some notes out here, but let's see what starts a hurricane, a hurricane. One thing is, um, tropical disturbance, you know, um, let's say the Atlantic ocean, you know, a hurricane typically begins 
as a lowly tropical disturbance. That's how it starts. Um, uh, it's really defined as organized thunderstorm activity. And it stretches around 100 miles, at least, across, and it maintains its identity for more than 24 hours. Now, during the summer, these disturbances often start as storms. And they move westward off the coast of Africa um, in what are known as tropical waves, okay, or even what is a subtropical ridge, all right? And if meteor meteorologists, if they determine or they think that a tropical disturbance may develop further, they'll designate it as an investigative area. And then, such as Irma, it became um, a disturbance off Cape Verde in late August, off those islands. With forecasters keeping close watch, okay, they started watching it. And what happened or what created was a tropical depression or cyclone. Under the right conditions, a tropical disturbance can actually develop further and start to spin around and uh, a low pressure uh, center. So you got the ocean and then you got this, the, the ocean is giving off heat because it warms up and then you create a disturbance of low pressure. And that center or that core starts to, to change and it becomes a tropical cyclone or what is called a tropical depression. Um, so basically, the warm ocean heats the air above, okay? And the rising warm air evaporates and starts to actually spin. So the, the, imagine that. You got the ocean, the warm ocean heats the air. The air starts to evaporate and then starts to spin because it's, it's, it's the uh, gravitational pull of the, the water that's causing that. And then the air then cools and condenses to form a lowering uh, cumulus cloud, okay, um, or a cumulonimbus cloud, I believe that's what it's called. And then intense low pressure sucks in air, cause, causing strong winds. All right, I'm nowhere near a meteorologist, but these are the elements that create a tornado. All right, so when we start going into conspiracies and theories and things like that, we got to figure out, well, how do we heat this water? Things of that nature. We're going to get into that, like I said, in another episode. Um, Brother Mel, um, what's your accounting on it? I know you have some information in regards to what creates these tropical storms. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I know that you, you definitely mentioned uh, the temperatures of the air as well as the water. Um, so what normally makes these things is um, the low pressure cells uh, of you know that, that location. So like in summertime, uh, it's a lot of low pressure, a lot of lower heat pressure, and that pressure presses up against the wind, which kind of forms like that cyclone. And as long as the low pressure cells continue to move in, they continue to add more pressure to that wind that's spinning, which is oftentimes how hurricanes can get out of control. It's that low pressure. So um, there's also uh, a bit of uh, a more spiraling and, and air rising when there's a Coriolis effect uh, happening. And again, this is kind of proof that the Earth is round because of this, this phenomenon. If it was flat, uh, there would be no need to have temperatures rising up and consistently creating spirals because then the Coriolis effect would not exist. Uh, it's, it's, you can almost think of funneling. If you're trying to funnel air, heat always rises, always. And as heat rises, the heat at the bottom of the, the, the cyclone or the bottom of the funnel is always going to be the lowest. And so as it continues to spin, it's just going to continue to pick up heat. Now, of course, we can't experience that physically in a natural form because we're talking about air here. But if you actually watch them form out there uh, in the ocean, a lot of meteorologists actually watch them early 
and as you watch them form, you'll see that they pick up air really quickly. And depending on how fast they're going, determines how much heat, how much heat determines how deadly they can be eventually. Because in wind will often surround surround this, this low pressure force and then you draw in more clouds and of course the the, the water from the ocean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, with that being said now, um there are different categories of um um, hurricanes. You have category one through category five. However, these recent hurricanes, particularly uh, the um, Irma or Hurricane Irma, is reported to go above and created a new category, category six, from what we're hearing, what we um, from what I hear. So. Let's talk about the categories. The first category, the winds actually range from 74 to 95 miles an hour. And with that being said, in the category one, what's normally uh, predicted is minor damage to property, like roof damage, um, isolated injuries to human beings, and short-term power outages. This is normally expected with a category one. With a category two, that's 96 to 110 miles. Um, significant property damage, including uh, flooding. Um, increased threat to humans due to falling debris. Um, extensive multi-day power outages um, with the category two. Now, category three, um, it ranges from 111 to 130 miles an hour. Its mobile and frame homes are destroyed. Extensive flooding. Um, normally they request, uh, the, um, the weather bureaus request evacuation for human safety. Um, electricity, water unavailable for up to several, several weeks. And that's usually with a category three with a, um, uh, category four, the winds range from 131 to 155 miles an hour. Um, Houses, shopping centers, irreparably damaged at this level. Um, humans at serious risk of death in certain areas, depending on where you are. Um, also, long-term power outages, even water source shortages with a Category 4. A Category 5, the winds are at excess of 155 miles an hour. And that's complete destruction of homes, shopping centers. Trees are uprooted. Um, extreme flooding, power and water potentially out for months uh, when this happens. So we're talking a Category 6 with Irma. We have Kitana or um, Kitma, which is now listed at already a Category 5 and will maintain either Category 4 or 5 when it, when it touches land going up through South Florida. So this, this it, it's, it's an amazing uh, situation, man. Um, and, and it, you know, it's something that it really make you have a deep respect for nature. Our uh, brother Mel, did you want to add to that info? Uh, yes, actually, bro. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned this because I was actually looking at this. Uh, this actual chart is actually a Saphir Simpson hurricane scale, and. Mm -hmm. You know, they originally, you're right, they originally had it set up for five categories. Uh, but now, you know, with technology improving, you're able to detect, you know, more levels to things that prior, you know, had limitations. Um, so everything, as you said, as far as the wind speed and the amount of damage in each of these six categories is spot on. Uh, but something I wanted to uh, just throw in there as well is the storm surge. A lot of times, uh, though, tell you how even more deadly they can be. Storm surge is basically when the sea or the ocean rises as a result of all of the, the atmospheric pressure that gets changed uh, with the storm. So with the category one, you know, you're not really going to see too much rising. Uh, those who live right on the, the sea, right on the uh, beach, they actually will see some. And they already tell you when there's a storm, don't go out there for that very reason. 
Um, so category one storm surge, you're looking at four to five feet, you know, from the ocean rising. Uh, category two, you're looking at six to eight feet. Category three, uh, you're looking at nine to 12 feet tall. Uh, category four, which is, you know, very, very common, uh, where a lot of trees can get blown down. You're always going to see usually uh, 12 to 15 feet up high. Uh, actually, not I'm sorry. Uh, 12 to 18 feet up high, and then, you know, the Category 5 is considered catastrophic. This is where your tsunamis, uh, those who are familiar with uh, what happens over there on, in Asia, they always get those tsunamis because the Pacific Ocean has uh, uh, 18 feet or higher uh, sea level, and, you know, that doesn't often happen here on, you know, this side of the globe, but on their side, that is common in there. With the Category 6, it does have potential to raise up sea level even higher than previously expected. So that's something to watch out for. Wow. Yeah, that's and that's powerful. That's And it, it, it's really kind of frightening, man. You know, nature is really capable of doing some dangerous things. Uh, we tend to um, think, some of us, I know that I don't, we tend to think that, you know, we control the earth to a certain degree. Um, we don't. Um, you know, science is all about observing and reporting nature's phenomena. And as technology um, advances, so does science. Really, science and technology, engineering and math, really create a composite understanding of a lot of things that earth uh, does. Uh, that's why, you know, the trending... Um, educational uh, pedagogy is to start teaching young ones uh, STEM, the STEM system, which is science, technology, engineering, and math, because it's very important that we come to grips with, with what nature does that we absolutely have no control over. And one of the aspects of nature is this is this particular pedagogy, man. Um, Brother Mel, we're going to do a follow-up episode. This was a brief episode to kind of explain the phenomena of uh, her, of hurricanes. But I think, you know, we're going to do a follow-up episode and we'll probably go live and get the audience engaged and get really in-depth into this phenomena called hurricanes, tsunamis, twisters, earthquakes, and all of these things. Uh, yeah, most definitely. Uh, to talk to, you know, let the people know, you know, the foundation, you know, what, what's being, you know, observed. A lot of times, you know, people create myths or, you know, conspiracies that are things they don't understand. So, you know, this is kind of what we have to make, just kind of break down what is a hurricane. You know, what mm -hmm. is made up of, all of it. You know, so not only you get rid of the, you get rid of the myth, and you're going to have to add me, kind of make sense out of it. Mm -hmm. Break it down properly. And you begin to understand it. The myth of it goes away. Definitely. Definitely. Well, that's what it is, man. Much appreciated, man. Appreciate your insight. Um, Timo Cyrus family, be on the lookout for a follow up. Like, comment, and subscribe to Timo Cyrus on YouTube and Timo Cyrus Rises on YouTube. Please like, comment, and subscribe. At the end of this video, We'll have both links to YouTube channels, all our links to where you can reach us, our website, timosiris.com, our Facebook page, Timo Cyrus on Facebook. And, um, you know, we, we appreciate the support and, you know, the, um, the loyalty, man. We try to deliver the information non-biased and direct and leave it open for criticism, man. So with that being said, it's your one and only Kansu Chef Small Moon, Melvin the Grand Archivist, Timo Cyrus on the horizon, and we out.